So it has been about two months since I last filmed a update slash speed reviews video. So we have quite a lot of products to talk about today. If you're new here for my speed reviews video, basically these are the products that I just get to tie up my opinions in a nice cute little bow. Products that I feel like I have changed my mind about since the last time I talked about them or maybe I tried them off camera and I'm bringing them up here to give you just a super quick review. So lots of products that we're going to talk about. None of these are from my most recent Sephora hauls. That's going to be a separate video in of itself, but I've had a lot of products piling up. So I'm happy to finally be sitting down and talking to you about these products. All right, let's get into the face primer and bases. So the first one that I have is the One Size Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer. I have that on this side of my face. This does a nice job of blurring the skin. I think this will work better for oily skin types. I do have more dry skin types, so I can't really say how this does with longevity. I also don't have the deepest pores, but I can tell that this definitely mattifies the face as I apply it. I feel like it really does smooth my skin, so I do really like this primer. It's not one of my all-time favorite primers. I direct you more towards the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas over this one, but this one does remind me of that product. Then on this side of my face I have the e.l.f. power grip primer this one is a really nice affordable grippy kind of primer so if you like the milk makeup grip primer but you're looking for something more affordable or maybe you just like the idea of it but you can't afford it this is definitely a good one to give a try I do think that it does help with longevity and it certainly does have a nice stick to it I like this I don't typically love grippy primers so I'm not super into this product but in terms of what it's supposed to do I think it does a nice job so this isn't necessarily a primer, but I use it as kind of an underlayer for my highlight. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. This is a newish product. It had its time on TikTok where it was viral, and I do really, really like it. Make sure you're using it right. I personally don't think it looks very good as a foundation, but using it similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, where I like to just kind of underpaint my skin to give my skin a little bit of glow, I do really really like this so in that circumstance I do recommend this I don't like it over foundation I don't think it is strong enough to be used over products I think it does add a nice soft glow underneath so I do like this Moving on to a couple foundations that I wanted to update you on. They are both the literal complete opposite from one another and I saw that today because I split faced today. So I have the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation on this side. I don't love this foundation. It really does leave the skin looking dewy and hydrated, but I also think it looks a little thick and emphasizes my pores and my texture. So it's kind of a give and take here. If you have really dry skin but you don't have too much texture or pores I think you will like this but for me I just think it emphasizes the things that I don't want it to emphasize on my face the really good thing about this is how hydrating it is and how hydrated it makes my dry skin look but then I, I feel like I can see the makeup sitting on top so I don't really love this foundation I don't think it's a bad foundation but there's a lot of hype around it and I'm like eh about it I feel like I have a lot of other better foundations in my collection. Now the complete opposite is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. I really, really did love this one when I did a dedicated review. I like it less than when I did my review on it. And it's so funny how different it looks from the Kosas. So this gives a lot of coverage. You really only need a little bit. And compared to how hydrating the Kosas looked, this made it look kind of dry on my skin. It didn't go well with the powder bronzer when I was blending it. So I don't love this as much as I initially did when I first reviewed it. However, I still do like it, but there's a lot of other better foundations out there that I've tried. All of the new foundations that have come out, honestly, they've just really been middle of the road. This for a while was my favorite of the new launches because I loved the coverage that it gets, but you do not want to apply too much of it. You don't want to apply too much powder over top. It is quite finicky. I did, however, love the primer that came out with this. I've already talked about that plenty, so I didn't put it in this video, but that primer, one of my favorites. Moving on to concealer, I have two that I've been testing. The first one is the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. Absolutely 
love this you guys now i got the shade mp3 which is more peachy it was not intentional but i have been using this more as a color corrector because of how peachy it is on me but i find this to be really hydrating on the under eyes it's not the best longevity wise but i do enjoy how hydrating it does look under the eyes so typically how i like to use this is as an under eye corrector and then i will put a little bit of a skin tone concealer on top and i feel like this holds on to my under eyes not looking too crepey or dry underneath so i do really like this concealer the other concealer that i've been using is the catrice ultimate coverage cream concealer unfortunately this one didn't work out for me it looks super duper dry on my under eyes luckily it is pretty creamy so that's nice because it is so affordable i do like it on top of like my zits or anything like that for a spot concealer but in terms of the under eyes this is terrible it looks super duper dry i did dab it on my under eyes just for something more skin tone on top of the lys concealer and since the lys concealer is so hydrating i actually found that they evened each other out well but still i don't like this concealer in terms of powders we'll start off with the setting powder that i've been using the most recently this is the one size ultimate setting powder this for me i'm not in love with it's a bit too heavy for me i feel like if you have oily skin you would like this better but it has too much to it to where I feel like it emphasizes my dry skin. It sits a little heavier on my skin. So if you really need a powder to suck up your oils, I think you might like this if you have oily skin, but it's too much for my delicate dry skin. A powder that I've been enjoying setting with though has been the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Pressed Face Powder. So I didn't like this so much on its own, but I think it's really pretty to set the skin if you want a little additional coverage. And because it is supposed to be able to be used for a powder foundation, it's a little bit thicker. So I find that it does a good job of smoothing over the pores. I, I'm gonna correct myself. I don't necessarily use this to set my makeup. Like I will go into one of my favorite setting powders to set my under eyes but I will use this on top of that to kind of blur everything and I think it's really pretty it's not one of the best powders in my collection but it's the kind of situation where if you're looking for something affordable you're on the ColourPop website they're having a sale then this is worth picking up and then lastly this is a powder foundation this is from elf the camo powder foundation I like this it definitely is not one of my favorite powder foundations but I do think it's a really fantastic one from the drugstore it gives a lot of coverage if you use a sponge to apply it I don't think it wears the best however I still think it is a really nice drugstore powder foundation now in terms of powder foundation I recommend something like Fenty or makeup forever over this one I think those both wear better they look a little natural this can look a little heavy if you apply too much but for the drugstore, maybe if you are giving powder foundations in general a try, I have enjoyed this. All right, y'all. It is blush galore up in here. So I want to talk about the new Kaleidos blushes. I have a bone to pick with these. I threw away the boxes that these came in because it's just so tedious to take these out of the box to use them. But the reason why I considered keeping the boxes is because the boxes have the name of the color, which, which is very important for me to know since this is my job. But I just threw the boxes away because they were so annoying. So I don't know the names of any of these colors at the top of my head. So that is my bone to pick. I wish they would have put a sticker on here with the name or something on the mirror. I don't care. Don't like that. But love the blush formula in general. So they're lucky. There were five shades in this collection and all of them are so beautiful. Like this one right here is a great neutral one. I recommend that color. And then I also recommend this really cool toned blue based pink. Very similar to the Dior blush that's really popular right now that keeps getting sold out. All of the colors in here are absolutely gorgeous. I recommend them all. Those two are just my favorite, but these are super buttery, smooth, matte powder blush, and I think you will really, really enjoy them. Kaleidos did a phenomenal job with this formula, I'm telling you. Moving on to some not so great blushes. I've slowed down from buying Chanel because they have not been stepping up to the plate, in my opinion, as a brand. So we'll start off with the La Comete, La Comet, the Comet blush. Blushes. So I picked up both of these. I mean, they are so expensive, you guys. So the first shade that I have here, my cheeks are all weird because I have multiple blushes on different cheeks. But this peach 
or pesh comete does not show up on my skin at all. You have to be extremely fair for this to work. I pay way too much for this not to show up. All it leaves is a little glow behind, but I get nothing from this. So if you are light skin and above, this will not even show up on you. Don't recommend that. The shade Coral Etoile I think is absolutely gorgeous. It blends really beautifully. I think it's going to work for even medium skin tones. It carries a lot of pigment. It's what I have on this cheek. Do I recommend it though for the price point? No, the Kaleidos are better and those are much more affordable. So while I do like this, I'm happy I have this. It's counterpart I just dislike so much that I'm even mad at the darker shade just because it's related to the one that I hate. The other Chanel blush that I have, this one is a little bit older, but it's the Powder Blush Illuminator or the Blush Lumiere, excuse me, in Pesh Rose, Rose. And I just wanted to update you guys. It's gotten a little bit of hard pan. I don't know if you're able to see that. I think this blush is pretty it doesn't have a ton of pigmentation but it does leave a very soft peach glow on the cheek I like it I don't love it I don't think it's justifiable in the price but I did want to share with you that it's getting hard pan and I don't like that so while it's pretty I don't think I recommend it because again Next blushes that I wanted to talk about, and I don't even think that I really needed to talk about these in this video because I think my opinion stands on how much I love these. These are the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow blushes from the Masterpiece collection that just came out. So we have, oh my gosh, I think you guys, I think I said these wrong, so I apologize. But we have Rococo or Rococo and Baroque. Both of these are absolutely beautiful. On my skin tone, I prefer Baroque. It's a little lighter, but the color shows up much brighter on the cheek than it looks in the pan. But Rococo is also freaking stunning, bronzy. Mm. You can't go wrong with these. These formulas give such a beautiful glow on the cheek. You almost don't need highlight with these. So if you've never tried this formula in general and you like that kind of blush lighter styled product, I think you will enjoy this. And a quick update on the new Wayne Goss cheek duos. I was able to model these for his uh, promotion video, which was very kind of Wayne to allow me to do that. But it was when I was moving at the product launch, so I wasn't able to really talk about it. But yeah, both of these are really stunning. They're definitely on the more soft side. So this is Desert Blossom right here. It's a little bit more pinky. And then the other one that we have is Sweet Wildflower which has a little bit more peachiness to it and then more of a champagne as opposed to a pinky highlight. These are one of my favorite products that Wayne has in his line which is why I was so excited when he asked me initially to be in that video because there was one product I wanted to model. It would be these because I stand by these products. The blushes are beautiful but it's the highlights that knock my socks off. They're so buttery and creamy and I feel like they do not emphasize texture on the cheeks. So both of these are stunning. They're a little bit close in color so I don't necessarily think you need both. But I just wanted to update you guys that I'm still loving these. They are both still super fantastic. This is from the Colourpop Valentine's Day collection. I feel like I haven't come back to share my thoughts on this with you guys. This is the Colourpop pop or the soul body shimmering body powder in pretty peachy this is really really gorgeous but it's definitely not my color for my skin tone I was able to use this on my eyelid and it's really gorgeous but I don't recommend this if you have a lighter complexion like myself because this just won't look good on you and it doesn't look good on the face either it looks really really chunky haven't tried it yet on the body so I can't speak for how this kind of formula looks on the body pretty for the eyelids but it's not worth it for an eyelid color I only only have two eye products to talk about because all of the other eye products I've been using have been eyeshadow palettes and I just leave my eyeshadow palettes to do the talking for those. So let's first talk about the Hindash Boy Tears that I've been playing with. Longevity on this is great. I think the quality is really great. It is what is on my eyelids right now. I think it is very soft, very pretty, and it was an extremely fitting launch for the collection that this came out with. Indesh currently doesn't have any shimmers in his collection, so this is kind of his eyelid shimmer. I don't think there's anything special about this, but it does exactly what it's supposed to do, and it's very pretty. I wish, personally, it had a little bit more glimmer to it. I think it can be blended out to be quite soft. I don't love it on my face. I don't love using it anywhere other than the eyes, unfortunately. I thought this would be a little bit more versatile, but I think it's one of those products where it's too glittery for the face, but it's not 
not glittery enough for the eyes, but the quality of this is great. I just don't think it's unique in my collection. But that being said, it's unique in his collection and it has a place and it makes sense in his collection. You know what I mean? I've also been using the Isam the mascara a lot recently. Isam came out with this mascara and it is really good. If you guys don't know, I struggle from very short, sparse, thin lashes and I think this is super solid. It gives me some length. It gives me a little bit of volume. It's nice and separating. I don't have any falsies or anything on. It's holding the curl decent. My eyelashes don't ever hold a curl, so this is doing pretty good if I'm being honest. Right now, Muse Beauty Pro, which is the company behind Esum, they are actually having a 20% off site-wide sale, so this is worth adding to your cart. I wouldn't say it's worth like placing a singular order for, but if you're ordering things from the website, this is great. I wanted to talk about the e.l.f. Love Triangle Lip Filler Liner and I think these were an underrated launch because e.l.f. really needed some lip liners in their whole collection because they didn't have any. They had a couple limited edition ones but they didn't have their solid main collection lip liners and I think that these are really great for the price. I think they came out with really solid great base collection colors. I've been using these a lot. Are they the best lip liners that I've ever used? No. You know, it's hard to beat my Pat and Charlotte Tilbury lip liners. Those to me are just the best. But in terms of this price point for lip liners, I think these are great. Now, it, I would suggest NYX over the e.l.f., but the e.l.f. is still really good. They're nice and creamy and have great colors. They aren't the most long-lasting, but they certainly do their job. The other lip liner that I've been messing around with and have been using a ton, I would say over the last month since this launch, this is the most used lip liner from me. This is the Lip Tone Pencil from Hindash in the shade Hush. It's a little bit on the warmer side, but I do find it to be quite versatile, especially with any warm look that I'm doing. This is the perfect warm lip liner that goes with just about any lipstick for that look as well. So it's been really versatile. Love the formula he has for this. It's, it's more on the waxier side as opposed to super duper slippery creamy. It's similar to a formulation like MAC, which I prefer. It's one of those sharpenable pencils. I love this. I love everything about this lip liner. I think it's really great. And alongside that, I've also been using the Hindash Manifesto lipstick in Call Me Peaches. This is a matte lipstick, but it is quite a comfortable matte lipstick. Lipstick. It's not my all-time favorite matte lipstick formula. I do feel the need to wear a gloss over this if I am in need of more hydration, but I think it's such a great versatile color that I've been using it so much. It doesn't seep into the fine lines of the lips or anything. It doesn't make the lips look super dry or anything, but it's just like right at that point where I'm like, mm, I do want a lip gloss though. So I think it is a solid matte lipstick though. So I can't complain. If it's gonna be matte, it's probably gonna be drying, but I think this is really nice because of how lightweight it feels on the lips. I've been testing and have decided I'm not that big of a fan of the e.l.f lip glossy lip stains, whatever these are. The colors are atrocious. So the color names are Pinkies Up, Basic Beige, and Power Mauve. All of these look bright cherry red on the lips. They apply really uneven. They do leave a stain to the lips, but it's a bit too cherry red for me. They just don't match up with the names on here. I haven't been enjoying my experience with these, unfortunately. I had to mention these. I haven't talked about them really since they launched, but these are the Tom Ford lipsticks that came out with their Badass Extreme collection. I thought that the packaging was absolutely stunning, so I had to pick them up. There were three colors that launched, and honestly, I don't recommend these lipsticks. It's so odd because these are different than the regular Tom Ford lipsticks that I've tried. These feel really dry to me. They have a lot of drag on the lips and they don't carry a ton of pigmentation. Like you don't get one swipe pigmentation. I thought I would love this shade Blush New, which is the nude shade. And it's pretty, but again, for the price you pay, it's way more drying than it needs to be. My favorite color in this launch though is Luscious. I think this is such a pretty raspberry color. 
color. It's quite dramatic. And if you were to get one of these lipsticks, I would recommend this one because I do love the color and I think it's a unique color. But for the price point that you pay for Tom Ford, the packaging is great. Even the way the lipstick, the bullet itself looks is great. But his regular line lipsticks, I feel like are better. Some other lipsticks that launched were alongside the Wayne Glass blush palettes. And we have two shades here from Wayne Goss. This new one is Iris, and then the other one is Poppy. Both of these are very mauve 90s style, which I enjoy, but I don't wear a ton. I do enjoy Wayne Goss's lipstick formula. They're kind of middle of the road. Like, they're a good formula. They're not the best formula. But if you want to support Wayne or you like these colors, you definitely won't regret the purchase. They're very deep and mauve. -y. And both of them, if you ask me, they look somewhat similar on the lips, so you only need one. They're nice wearable lip colors. I haven't reached for them a ton if I'm going to be honest because I've been wearing either super nude or very very bright so there hasn't been many occasions where I wanted to wear these colors too much but they're nice. A formula that I wanted to give an update on because I've changed my opinion on these are the M Cosmetics Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizers. A few of you got very offended in my review because I wasn't using them correctly so I have been corrected. Some of you could say it a little nicer but I've been corrected so these you really only need like two swipes and they're really comfortable they're more so like a tinted lip balm as opposed to a lipstick so in my initial review I was like layering it on and it was like melting and my lips were getting goopy and I didn't like that I now realize less is more with the product and you're not going to get opacity with it really it's just to get a tint on the lips and it's really gorgeous and I was using it wrong but I do like those the next product that I have are some liquid lipsticks from Florisys. I actually got these when I did a partnership with them, but I wanted to update you on these. They're such a good liquid lipstick formula. First of all, half of the experience with these are going to be the packaging. They are so beautiful. I'm wearing this shade M140 right now. And for a liquid lipstick, right, it doesn't look too dry. It looks really even. It's this really bright lip color. It lasts on the lips. It's quite comfortable for a liquid lipstick. Love, 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 love these. They're a great formula and you can't beat this packaging. The other liquid lipstick formula that I've been using are the Lip Clays from Kaleidos. I also love these. These are more of like a lip blur formula with a lot of opacity compared to what I have going on right now. So these are slightly more comfortable, but there's a lot more transfer with these. But I think they are so beautiful. I love this for a matte look that is really, really comfortable. I've talked about how much I love these so much. The shade that I'm getting the most use out of, of course, is going to be the nude shade. The one kind of bone I have to pick with these Kaleidos colors is they don't have very many nude or wearable shades. I feel like all of them are super dark and dramatic and that's the same with this launch as well. So if you like those dramatic lips, look into the colors. But I'm really excited that they now have this nude shade. I would love them to expand on that, give us some more pinky nudes, things like that. But a stunningly beautiful formula. And the last products that I wanted to update you on are because I love them even more than when I first tried them. These are from ColourPop. They're the Luxe Lip Oils. I think these are the best lip oils that you can get at this price point. These lip oils shocked me at how much I love them. They give you a little bit more opacity than you would expect. Playa Vista doesn't give too much color, but Hey gives a lot of color. I think these are beautiful, beautiful lip oils. They're extremely comfortable, extremely hydrating, and you know, a lot of us right now are spending a lot of money on our Dior lip oils. This is a really good one if you're on a budget. I had to share that with you because I, I liked them in my initial review video trying them but I've gone crazy for them since. They stay in my purse. They're great as purse lip oils. I love lip oils in my purses because they're both glossy and super hydrating. And that is it. Those are all of the makeup updates that I have for you. I will have another one actually very, very soon once I get through testing and really trying all of my Sephora haul pickups. But I have been itching to do this video because if you don't know, just so you can get it behind the scenes and you can exit out if you're not interested, bye. I'll see you in the next one. But if you want to 
chat with me because I'm feeling chatty apparently. The desk that I film on right now has a drawer and every time I try a new product I put it in this drawer and I use mostly the products in this drawer and then eventually once it gets filled or I feel ready I film an updates video and then these products all go back into my main collection. My drawer was absolutely overflowing and I was like if I don't film this dang video so I feel this sense of relief that I can now put all of these products in my main collection and I'm gonna fill this drawer completely with all my Sephora haul stuff and get to roll in on that. So let me know if you like these update videos. For me, they give me that sense of relief. Like, ah, okay, I finally gave you the update on these products. So thank you guys so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel. I hope you guys enjoy your time here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.